Good morning from one of my favorite places in the world, the beautiful Florida Keys. Today we are out here doing a little bridge fishing. We woke up this morning at 3.30 in the morning, drove about three, three and a half hours down here to the Florida Keys, and we are on the bridge, and it is time to hopefully catch some yellow jacks. That is the mission of the day, is to catch yellow jacks. I love catching them, I love eating them, so wish us luck, let's see what we can catch. here to the bridge and this is what we're doing we got short little leaders um, half ounce weight and we got these shrimp that we actually brought from home had them in buckets overnight and with some air bubblers so they did survive really well I'm gonna just hook it in the tail like this and what we're doing is we are fishing on this side of the bridge but the current is the tide is actually outgoing currently so the tide is going under the bridge but we are still casting this direction there's like a line of like a grass flat just on here and chad says to cast just on the inside of the grass flat and that's all we're doing and hopefully we catch some yellow jacks now we just gotta wait oh i just got eight on the way down i saw them come up and eat it Yeah. Well, target species acquired. My first yellow jack of the day. He's not a big one, but these are an unregulated species, so it doesn't have a size limit. Listen to him grunt. Oh, there they go. He just got it. Chad's slaying Ooh. in the background. He's like, get your line back in the water. Hey, they like these big shrimps. Oh. Shrimp hold up right here. <laughs> shrimp hold up. Just like that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You can't eat this. <laughs> Am I keeping them this size? Like that one, throw it back. Throw it back. Yeah, at least throw back this size. I'm trying not to get my tangle with you. Sorry. That's just fine. <laughs> Look at that. Barely hooked. And Brooke got a fish. I got a bigger one. Oh no! <laughs> Hook pulled. Came all the way back at me. If you have my rig, just bring it up. That's fine. That's a nice Ooh, one. Oh, I got a good one, Meg. Do you? Tighten the drag on that one, huh? Yep. I got one. There it right, goes. Flip or die, over. Brooke. Flip or die, Brooke. Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Heck yeah. Oh. Woo! <laughs> This is my biggest one of the day. You can't have the bait down in the water for more than three seconds without getting a yellow jack on. We're trying to throw back the smaller ones, but we're keeping some nice sized ones like this, but these are one of my favorite fish, not only to catch, but to eat. They're beautiful. They are so fun to catch. I have never seen a yellow jack bite like this ever. Chad told us when to come to the Keys. He knows what he's doing and we're catching them, baby. Let's yeah. catch some more. These are two fish that you'll catch a lot out here. Mangrove snapper and a yellow jack. Mm -hmm. Prime bridge species right here. I just love when these things are lit up with that blue. They're just so pretty. I like the marbling on them. Yeah, the, they're just beautiful fish. Yeah, they're cool. Even their eyeball, like you just, like the outside of their eyeball is all yellow and iridescent. It's just a really cool fish. And like the top of his back, you see all the blues and purples and stuff. Victor and I have come to the Keys and caught yellow jacks before, but we have never seen a bite like that. The second the, sh the shrimp was hitting the water, you could see them come up and shine and eat your shrimp as it was sinking to the bottom. That was just absolutely incredible. But the thing about fishing the bridges is like, if you're not here at the right time, 
you could totally miss a bite. It already has slowed down like that was crazy for, I don't know, 20 minutes of solid fishing. Not to say they're gone, but it's just crazy how they just like can come in spurts and- <laughs> Chad hooked up right behind you. <laughs> if you're not here at the right time, you could miss the bite. So oh gosh. Chad's got a mangrove on. I just caught a mangrove that was a little bit too small to keep. There you go. Fish are flying awesome. over the rail. Let's see how big he is. That's probably a keeper. 11 or better for me. Look at that, he's almost 12. Nice. He is worth it. He's an honest mangrove snapper. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful fish. If you guys don't know who this is, this is Chad. He has a YouTube channel as well, Chad Gone Fishing. Make sure you check him out. He's the one who told us to come out here because he knew that the yellow jack bite was on fire. So thank you for letting us know. Absolutely, anytime. We'll do this again. Well, I just caught the cutest fish of the day. A baby yellowtail snapper. It's probably one of the most well-known snappers is a little yellowtail, but they have to be 12 inches to keep, so he's obviously way too small, but he's very cute. He's going back. How are we looking, Vic? We got way too many shrimp. I don't know about you, but I really liked having shrimp the night before. It's always stressful when you're on your way to the Keys and you got to hit up like three tackle shops and every single one is like, dude, you got to wait till nine o'clock. The shrimp guy hasn't come yet. But last night we went over to a local tackle shop and we got our shrimp last night, baby. We woke up, we were out of there. I want you to comment down below how many dozen shrimp you think that Victor caught. So think about it, comment down below how many you think and then I'll tell you. So right now we're kind of waiting for the tide to switch and then hopefully the yellow jack bite picks up. We may have the chance of catching a mutton, but right now we're just switching out the shrimp bucket water so that they got nice fresh water. You don't ever want to come to the bridge and not have enough bait. So Victor bought 22 dozen shrimp. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it hurt my bank account. Let me tell you, inflation, Shrimp are not cheap these days. Six dollars a dozen for these bad boys. He asked for 22 dozen before he found out how expensive the shrimp were. And then at that point, he couldn't ask the guy to take him out of his bucket. So uh, we ended up with 22 dozen. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you end up having to release some, then oh well. But if you had enough bait all day long, then you had a successful day. And we've already had a successful day. Um, we already have a cooler full of yellow jacks, so Plenty to have a delicious family dinner. Chad found the school yellow jacks again. Yeah, so just drop it straight down. Boom. Oh, yep. oh Brecky flashed on it. Or is that Chad's? Got one. Uh huh. Mango. Oh no. Well, little mangrove. You can basically all day long. Oh, he just spit up the shrimp on me. You can basically all day long catch mangrove snapper. Look, he's got lines sticking out of his mouth. That's not mine. I hooked him perfectly. And he's probably got someone else's hook down in there. Let go of my hook. Open up. But all day long you can catch these mangrove snappers. We've caught a couple that were bigger, but he's way too small. He's going home. See ya. Probably gonna be another little mangrove. Oh, the right. grunt. So, besides little mangrove snappers, you can catch grunts as well. And look at that orange mouth. So cool. Cool, huh? Don't these guys kiss underwater? Yeah, underwater you'll see them kiss and you'll see them put their two orange mouths together. It's pretty cool. See ya. What is it, Brooke? That's a yellowtail? Yellowtail snapper. It's three different species back to back. Mangrove snapper, a grunt, and now a yellowtail. Relax. So the water is so clear that basically all day long you can see bull sharks just patrolling, nurse sharks, goliath grouper, there have been dolphin that are like ganging up together to feed and I don't, I don't exactly know what they're eating, we've actually seen them catch a couple of fish. Could be mangrove snappers, could be yellow jacks, I can't really tell, it's hard to see what's actually in their mouth, but lots of life to be seen here. So while we are waiting on our next bite, I'm going to tell you about today's video sponsor, which is... So today's video sponsor is myself. If you guys don't know, I have my own small business called floralobsternets.com. I hand make these lobster nets and tickle sticks. 
They are clear, they're low profile, and very narrow so they can get between rocks and under rocks and the lobsters can't see them. If you've seen any of my lobstering videos before, you have seen us put these to work. They work absolutely amazing. As you guys know, the holidays are coming up. I also have some t-shirts with the little lobster logo on the front, as well as some lobster tails that I designed. And then I have lobster gauges. And then even if you don't like lobstering, but you like snorkeling and scuba diving and you don't have a mask strap cover, I highly recommend getting one of these and you don't have to worry about ripping your hair out anymore. But if you guys are interested in anything, floralobsternets.com. I wanna give a big thank you to everyone who has purchased something. I greatly appreciate the support. And to all of you who are going to possibly purchase in the future, thank you. Now let's get back to fishing. So the last bridge kind of slowed down. So we decided to switch it up. We have switched bridges. And, oh, I'm coming out of a rock. I, I just pitched out a big shrimp and I felt it got eaten. I'm in a rock, I can feel the fish. I'm gonna have some patience with it. I have fished here before where I had patience and let the fish come back out and caught a group right here. Wasn't keeper, but. Looks like he's going, no? I'm getting He's it. going, bro. Yeah, you got him out. Oh, it's a mutton. Good job, rookie. Oh, don't take him out the water. Just keep it hot. Yeah. No. He came out. That's what we're looking for is muttons. He's not going to keep, though. He's probably 16 inches. Look how beautiful. He's lit up, huh? Chad ran over with some measuring tape. So they have to be 18, he's 16. He's got two more inches to grow before he comes home for dinner. I had patience and he came out, so hopefully we get a keeper one, but gorgeous fish. It's so cool to be able to catch these off of a bridge when we go offshore on our boat to catch them. I'm not sure if I've ever actually caught a keeper mutton land base before, but today might be the day. Let's get her back in the water. See ya. Good job, Brooks. That was on a nice big shrimp. I had brought in a smaller one that didn't even get touched, so I think I'm gonna go get another big one. <laughs> what on earth? That's a good fish, Brooke. I'm like so close to touching that bridge, the underbridge. I have no idea what I have. I just let the shrimp out. Well, this is your keeper mutton right here. You think? I, it's a good fish, whatever it is. He's staying straight back so far, oh so God, we're not getting close fish. to any pilings yet. Fingers crossed we land it. Definitely a nice fish. Chad's on too. Oh no. Uh oh, that rod's about to Oh, you guys just stuck? Just being No, good. no, we're okay. We're okay. It's big, whatever it is. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, the rod's Oh my gosh. Come on, baby, come on. Coming in quick now. Yellow jerks, you think? It's coming. If that rod's not on, Vic, that one went off. That's gonna be a keeper. Oh, bro. Hold on, hold on. Nice I got you, I got you, I got you. I got you. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. 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 Holy moly. She's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. She may even go 20. Brooke, I'm gonna get your 
Yeah, yeah buddy! <laughs> I literally shaking! <laughs> Woohoo! Check that baby out! <laughs> oh, that's awesome! I love it! Well, I had just released that 16 inch mutton, and I said I've never caught a keeper mutton on the bridge before. There it is, 19 inches. It's like so exciting to catch a fish like this literally off of a bridge. Like, you go offshore fishing to catch fish like this, and here we are fishing off a bridge. Another rod going Get up and the background. Get it's just been an inc <laughs> absolutely incredible day. Definitely the best day of bridge fishing I've ever had. I couldn't be any happier. <laughs> the best part is Chad was hooked up in the background too. We Good had job, four Ricky. rods go off all at one time, yeah. but this was the only one that stuck. Monsters, full drag on the conventional. Holy moly! Did you hear that? Go, 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 go. Woo -hoo -hoo. I just put this out and I'll, it got hit immediately the second I set it on the ground. So now I'm gonna just hold it. But uh, Chad's been catching a bunch of yellow jacks. I'm assuming it was probably another yellow jack. But crazy action! I'm really happy that we moved bridges because it was kind of slow there, and you always have like that time where you're like. We've caught fish here. Should we go to a different bridge or should we stay here and wait it out? And sometimes you make the wrong decision. And today we definitely made the right decision of picking up, switching bridges last minute because it's been going off around here. There it goes. Another rod in the background. It's just crazy. They don't let me breathe. <laughs> he said, they don't let me breathe. <laughs> Can't let the sharks beat us, baby. Got to get them in. Oh, no. Lost it. I don't think I... Did I get cut off? I think a shark ate you. Oh, I think a shark ate me. Because I got cut off. Oh, sometimes you can't win. Sometimes you get them in, and sometimes you can't win. No hook. At least I'm not afraid, so I just got to tie out a new hook. Alright, come on. Oh! You still got a fish, not a shark. Mm -hmm. Oh, good fish, whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Come on, baby. Beat the sharks, beat the sharks. Yeah, oh, it's a mutton. Are you sure? I mean, we have the net Maybe right not. here. Maybe not. I will just wait. There it goes. That might be 18 and a quarter. Uh, hold on, hold on. Man, he did a swoop de huh? Let's go. He might be, he might make it. This is that time. Nice. Hey, the bull shark left her alone. Yeah, it did. That's my third mutton of the day. <laughs> All right, Bricky. It's gonna be close, huh? Maybe yeah, it'll probably be seconds. 17. That's for a point of reference. What are we working on? Uh huh. 16. Well, this is our third undersized mutton of the day, and they've all been that exact like 16 inch too. I caught that one keeper, and then three like 16 inches. Which is crazy to think, because this guy four years ago, before they changed the size limit, every single mutton we caught today would have been keeper. Yep. Let's get her back in the water. We're having a pretty incredible day, huh? Yeah, we are. This is, uh, I feel like Brooke, Brooke's only witnessed like one really good bridge day because I do it a little bit more than her, but I'm happy she got to experience like a really good bridge day. I've definitely put my hours in of just sitting here all day long and being like, well, I guess we're not going to make a video today because we didn't catch any fish. Nothing to even bring home for dinner. So yeah. it's definitely been an incredible day. You guys should like the video because I don't know very many girls who are willing to wake up at 3.30 in the morning, spend all day in the sun with three stinky boys out out here on the bridge and she's doing a great job. <laughs> This 
this may be the smallest black grouper I've ever caught in my entire life. And that guy was probably sitting down there that whole time eating that ballyhoo. Because it had a whole ballyhoo and this thing has just been slowly bouncing and every single time it felt like nothing was there. That's because this guy was down there eating it. I'm going to give him the rest of his ballyhoo and send him home. <laughs> Hopefully it stays in there. See ya! Oh, they fell out. But he did get to eat the rest of it. <laughs> well, we got here at sunrise and now the sun is setting back there in the background. A full day out here on the bridge and it was an incredible time. We caught so many different species. We got fish to bring home for the family. It was just an all around amazing day out here on the bridge. We may fish a couple more shrimp. It's about to be slack tide now. We've gone through two full tides and it's just been an amazing day. I don't know what else to say, but just a beautiful day out here. are back home and it's time to fillet up our cooler of fish. Today I'm going to show you guys how to fillet a yellow jack because in my last video I showed you how to fillet a mutton snapper so I'll fillet the mutton later but I'm going to show you a yellow jack. So here we go. And my knife that I'm using today is this Dexter 7 inch um, flexible fillet knife and as always you guys can save 20% with my code BROOK20 on DexterOutdoors.com. Victor actually just sharpened this knife and it is very sharp. Now, yellow jacks are something that are good to eat almost like any way that you could possibly imagine. They make great sushi, sashimi, fried, grilled, broiled, however you feel like cooking a yellow jack, you can cook a yellow jack. The only thing is they got a hard tail, kind of like a Jack Ravel, but they're not to be confused with a Jack Ravel. They taste very different, but they got that hard tail still, so it's a little bit hard to get through that. But, but besides that, they got gorgeous, gorgeous meat. Oh yeah. We haven't had yellow jacks in quite some time and boy, are they delectable. Another thing about a yellow jack is they have very thin skin. So they're a little bit more difficult to skin because it's some because sometimes you might leave a little bit of skin behind but we'll see how i did on this one yep look at that you can't win them all <laughs> oh, this is really thin i would even leave that on there so thin like you could totally eat that like it wouldn't be an issue but if you're someone who doesn't like that then understandable so just cut out those pin bones Let's see if we can get redemption on the second side and not leave behind any skin. I can already tell it's not looking like it's going so well. And the reveal? Ah, she did it again. <laughs> I think it's identical to the other one. But look, technically, look at that. I'm just so good. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, you're There's too no good. holes in the skin. I'm just too good. That's what it is. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Mm -hmm. Am I too good? Too good. <laughs> or am I doing a bad job? Too good or just really bad? Comment down below. <laughs> now I'll see you in the kitchen. Welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight I'm going to do a very simple just fried fish recipe. Like I said when we were filleting the fish, this fish can be good so many different ways. So Victor's actually making ceviche tonight as well. So we're gonna have some ceviche and then some fried fish. So we're going from like the healthiest way to have it to like the least healthiest, but you can combine the two and it's life is all about balance. So it's gonna be okay. We also got to enjoy some of this fish last night. We took that mutton snapper and mangrove snapper and some yellow jack to one of those restaurants where they cook it for you and they did it franchise style, as well as in marinara, and then aquapes. Aquapes? Aquapes. Aquapes. <laughs> so we are going to enjoy this fish a lot of different ways. So let's get to battering our fish. 
All we have here is some flour and now I'm gonna season it up and that's all we're gonna do. We're just gonna do a seasoned flour batter and just keep things nice and simple. So salt. We're also going to salt once they're finished frying so you don't have to put too much salt at the beginning because you're gonna add it later on. Then garlic powder. Don't be afraid to season your flour. And then onion powder. And that's all we're gonna do. Okay, stir that up. Once you have that all mixed together, it is time to bread our fish. These fish are kind of thin fillets, so I didn't really wanna do like a very thick batter on them. So that's why we're just doing the flour mixture. And that's all I gotta do. Now, I have the whole family coming over tonight for dinner. And fried fish is something that I actually enjoy to have even cold as leftovers. So I know this tray looks like a lot of fish, but if we don't end up eating it all, that's okay because we can have it for tomorrow. I'll see you guys outside once I finish battering all these up. All right, so any chance we get to not fry fish inside, we always take it. So we're outside on the side burner. We got our oil nice and hot, and it's time to start frying. Still missing one of the brothers, but we're gonna have a lot of batches, so we're gonna get started. All right, first batch coming out. We did do a double flour dredge on these. But we got a beautiful golden brown, huh? Oh yeah, baby. As soon as they get out of the oil, that's when you salt them. Just give them a little hit, hit of salt, and then that salt's gonna stick and oof, be delicious. Now it's time to put in the next batch. I did whip up some homemade tartar sauce, which is half sour cream, half mayonnaise, chopped up pickles, onion, and a lot of black pepper. So there we go. Really delicious stuff. And then this is what would be known as fancy sauce, which is ketchup and mayonnaise. First round. First round. Probably not. First round's on Brooke. <laughs> I mean, it's it's hard to beat fried fish. It's, it's simple but delicious. I love it. Um, I wish there was more. Can't go wrong with Yellow Jack. I ate uh, Yellow Jack two days in a row. Had it in uh, Victor Ceviche Yellow Jack. Fried Yellow Jack's delicious. Last night we took it to a restaurant that will cook it for you. And actually asked them to cook it for us three different ways. So we had it um, Frances. Aquapez. What was it? Aquapez and marinara. Oh yeah. Three different ways last night, and now two different ways tonight, ceviche and fried. So we've uh, we've experimented with uh, this yellow jack, and it's delicious every which way. Well, I'm enjoying my yellow jack. Um, I love fried fish too. The sauces are really good for the dipping. The ceviche was delicious. We usually have it with lobster, so it's pretty fun to have it with fish. Good job, Brooke and Victor. Love it. When you have uh, two good recipes, well, I mean, fried fish, people might say, like, oh, all fried fish is the same. But when it's fresh fish and someone takes the time to use clean oil and cook it just right, it doesn't matter if you uh, try to upgrade the, the quality of fish you had, you couldn't do better than this. And the ceviche was great, too, with the yellow jack. I wanted to say two things. Number one, it's just a beautiful dinner with the family out in the backyard. It's finally cooling down in Florida, and that's one of the reasons those yellow jacks are at the bridge. It's all in all a good time. But I think you guys saw that we probably kept like 20 fish. Believe it or not, 
every single thing is gone between the ceviche the fried fish the fish we took out last night you get like those one to two pound little butterball yellow jacks they're not big they got plenty of meat on them and we fed you know a family of six seven people multiple days in a row and you can't go wrong with that and I had a good time with Berkey on the bridge. Well, another successful family dinner. If you guys are interested in ordering anything off my website, floralobsternets.com, I'll have a link in the video description. I usually ship out within two to three days of orders being placed, so thank you so much in advance for supporting me. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.